I've been busy looking after my daughter, Esther. She's uh, around about 20 odd months and she is, oh, she's pretty full on. So, but that's what you expect from a 20 month old. So I've been busy looking after her and um, it's been awesome actually. I, I've quite enjoyed being able to stay at home and spend time with her rather than getting up and getting out the door to work and sort of only seeing her at night and that sort of thing. So no, it's, I, I to be honest, I, I'm in a far better place than I know a lot of people are. So I've got to be thankful and grateful for that. Oh, that's uh, that's and now you're enjoying fatherhood, right? Yeah, that's it's tremendous. Uh, tremendous. Uh, you're very lucky to be able to spend some quality time with with that. So that's and congratulations, by the way. That and yeah, that thanks. Age, they call it the terrible twos. I remember with my kids <laughs> too. They're into everything, aren't they? And it's wonderful. Yeah, really. she's um. I mean, I, I'm not going to say fatherhood isn't challenging because it, it certainly is. I think I think I found the first probably three to six months more challenging than it is now. But I'm, it's it's not always plain sailing, that's for sure. But it is pretty special. Um, yes. Were you there, yeah. Brian? Did you uh, did did the birth go okay? Were you there? No. Fate? Yeah, yeah, I was did there. It, <laughs> it was. I'm, I, it's the one and only time I'll probably be there. I'm, I'm not sure we're planning on having any more kids anyway, but uh, it was, I mean, it, I'm, it's really, I found it difficult just because you're standing there trying to help, but there's not a lot you can do and someone you love is in pain and, and it's, um, but yeah, it was, uh, I wouldn't, it's, a, it's a, a unique experience is how I describe it, and then once it's all done and you've got a little baby in your hand, it's pretty, it's pretty special. So, it's no, it's. Um... But after the tribe, you you had quite an interesting career change. You at university and you studied accounting. Yeah, so I just sort of, I mean, I always worked hard at school and uni and stuff, and I sort of fell into accounting a little bit. I was doing it through uni and then ended up sort of in the last year uni a whole bunch of people apply for these graduate sort of type jobs at these firms and I got one of those and then so before I knew it I was sort of working as an accountant and um, I worked at KPMG one of the firms in Wellington and then once I'd finished there I moved over to London and continued working there for as an accountant for a few years or uh, Probably about, I, I think I worked as an accountant for 12 or 13 years in total. Um, so, but, it, you know, it was a career which was um, w rewarding and, you know, it, it afforded me a certain type of lifestyle. And, you know, you managed, living in London was great because you could just jump on a plane for what was a relatively cheap airfare and um, shoot over to somewhere on the continent for the weekend. And, um, you know, I loved living in London. It was a, a little bit of a, um, how would I, it took a, f a few real months to settle in, but I suppose one of the, at the time my sister was living there and, and she sort of described it as it's a city you've got to put a lot into to get a lot out of, but once you get used to the commute side of things and traveling somewhere for an hour on, in a day is, is it becomes nothing. It's sort of, you. there was so much going on, it was awesome. And I, I had a lot of friends and family and stuff there so it was i i loved living in london um a lovely but story. yes did you ever get recognized ryan as a matter of interest in your accountancy days no no i think i i i, I probably looked relatively dramatically different from <laughs> how i did um, yes. on the tribe and, and part of that's all the makeup and hairstyles yep. and stuff like yep. that um but no i don't not really but people always when people find out one way or another that I was I don't tend to broadcast it but uh, that I was on something like that that people always find it a bit of a laugh yes, do a bit yeah. of a google search these days you find anything and it's uh it's it's always come up and and yeah. then right you, you then moved uh, over to Australia you were in Melbourne doing the county again there yeah 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 so I moved to Melbourne just for a couple of years and then um Sort of was continued accounting there and i love melbourne as well um it's a, a great city it's probably a i'd say it's a, a blend between the size of london and the sort of homely feel of wellington i suppose um it's sort of a, a, a quite a middle ground in that regard and um but melbourne was awesome Pl plenty going on there again as well and i had quite a few friends and stuff um 
But I just sort of at one point in time decided that I didn't want to be an accountant forever. I'd done it for a few years and it, I sort of decided to take the, the approach of happiness over money. Um, oh, that's and, and, and yeah. was that something that, because um, that's a dramatic um, career change, Ryan, and I think a lot of the listeners will be fascinated. I mean, so many people, you know, living, and I feel for them, you know, living the nine to five, you know, Monday morning blues. I'm very lucky where I've never, I, I often say I don't feel I've ever worked a day in my life because I've been doing what I love doing and what I enjoy doing. And I've been lucky yeah, enough yeah. to earn a living out of it. And, uh, and, and, uh, uh, but, but I, I, I can't imagine. So you, you go, you'd have the Monday morning blues and Friday and just think, Oh my God, what am I doing? And you weren't happy. Yeah. And, and, no, that, that's exactly it. And it was, I'd been like that for a few years. Um, but it's always difficult when you get, you feel like, oh, I've worked so hard at a career for such a long time to sort of throw it all away, essentially. And then you start sort of thinking, oh, what can I do that's going to afford me a similar lifestyle and these sort of things. And in the, in the end, I sort of decided, well, I just need to do something I love. Um, I, I suppose I was looking for that job that I you know, enjoyed more than I didn't. Um, and luckily I sort of, I mean, I had to make some significant sacrifices. I, I moved back to Wellington. Um, it wasn't it wasn't something I actually wanted to do at the time. It was, I moved back to Wellington because I knew I had some contacts um, within rugby in New Zealand. And I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. All I knew is that I loved rugby and I wanted to get involved in that somehow. Um, and I sort of took the approach of, well, if, if I can make scratch a living together out of it, I will. Um, <clears throat> I sort of so I moved back and hit up contacts and I got actually quite lucky when I left Melbourne I, I went to a, a wedding in Rarotonga who was a good friend of mine from London he was he was he was a Kiwi but he was getting married in, in Rarotonga and uh, he he was a professional rugby well, he still is a professional rugby player and it just so happened there was a guy at the wedding there that I met that was involved with the Hurricanes and he said look when you come back to Wellington, give us a bell and we'll have a chat. And um, it sort of went from there, really. So, and for our I'll... listeners, Ryan, that um, um, Ryan um, will be, I mean, in England, it's the equivalent of Everton or Liverpool, or in America, it's like the Jets, the New York Jets. And yeah. I mean, the Hurricanes is a big franchise, isn't it, uh, Ryan? And what's the league Super, called again? Super, called Super Rugby. Um, so, that's a the league that they play in essentially is um, uh, with t there's five teams from New Zealand, five teams from Australia, and five teams from South Africa. Oh, is it five? Well, there's one from Japan as well thrown in there. So, um, uh, yeah, the competition is 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 a, a full on competition, and I'm lucky that I've got in there as a, a performance analyst is essentially my role, and I. I sort of look at our team, what we've done well and what we haven't, and present video to the coaches on that, and the same for the opposition, and we look at trainings and all that sort of stuff, so I've been really, I mean, I had, as I said, I had to work hard at the, at the start and continue to work hard, but um, really build my reputation within the new industry, but it's it's always been, I found it easy because, like you, you alluded to earlier, you've never felt like you've worked a day in your life, and I, I I really feel like that with this job. So I've been very lucky to fall into a job that I love. Um, and it's, it does, it changes your whole outlook and on life and your sort of enjoyment of life when you, you find a job that you love because you spend so much of your life at work and, yeah. uh, you know, you, you might as well try and do something you love or in, at least enjoy. And I, I made that decision. It was... In the end, it wasn't a tough decision because I was disliking what I was doing so often, but I was sort of said to myself, I'll give myself a year to try and get involved somehow, and luckily it panned out. So, right. And, and what, what, would you like to coach eventually, Ryan? Or where, what, what, um, I, I mean, I'm not sure is the short answer. I, I think you've got to have a certain temperament um, to be a coach. Um, yeah, it's sort of... Yes and no, I suppose. But at this stage, I'm still sort of building my career as it goes here within New Zealand rugby. And um, 
because uh, believe it or not, the New Zealand rugby community, I suppose, is quite a small one, um, and everyone knows everyone and all that sort of stuff. So uh, I'm continuing to sort of move up the ranks within that. Um, like I've got a few, a couple of contracts with New Zealand rugby, doing some of the age grade stuff there. Um, unfortunately, a lot of that stuff's been put on hold with the COVID piece for this year, but. For more information on audio dramatizations, please visit www.tribeworld.com. Keep the dream alive. 